Hi people, there's been a bit of interest in some pictures I've been sharing, uh, so I thought I'd make a run through video of my garage NFT hydroponic system. Long story short background, I've always been a bit interested in hydroponics, but it's one of those things I've never really got around to looking into. I had some time off coming up for the Christmas break and I was looking for a project and I decided to go with this. Because of that, there was a rush to get materials and the whole thing wasn't that well thought out. And as a result, there's a lot of things I would probably do differently the second time round. So as I started to build this system, that's around about the time that I started watching Who Chose. And having watched a lot of his stuff now, I think I've really overcomplicated it, but it seems to be going pretty well. In here, I've got bok choy and pak choy. I've got flat leaf parsley in here. I've got basil and coriander, and it's all going pretty well. I've had a couple of little issues with the coriander. I'm getting this kind of down in the middle here. I reckon it might be an airflow thing. I've actually just bought a fan uh, that I think I'm gonna run some air across the top of this uh, while I'm gone. So the system maintains itself five days a week and I come and check on it on weekends and that's when I do my res checks and maintenance. It's crowded in there, too crowded. Things are getting up really close to the lights. There's a lot of shadows being cast and I mentioned the problem in the coriander that I think might be airflow. Um, Honestly, I've been a little bit surprised by how quickly this has grown up. Three weeks ago, when I first put the seedlings into the system, it looked like this, and it's gone to this in three weeks, um, which surprised me, really. Um, my plan is to go up another level, buy some more lights and, and extend the system upwards, but that'll be a story for another video. So let's get into the system details. I've pulled out one of the rails and this lets us have a look at what I've done with the NFT rails. Now, I said overkill. These are uh, 65 by 100 um, square down pipes. Now, I decided I wanted to have removable lids, so I went to the extra effort of buying an extra 50 by 100 mil down pipe, running a saw up the middle, and making these remo removable lids. I also cut tops out like that. The theory was I might be able to pull the whole thing off and make it easier um, to kind of change them into new channels. But looking at those root masses, I don't think moving them is gonna be very easy like that. Um, so that was probably a waste of time. When I go up a level, I'm probably just gonna cut round holes in some 50 by 100 meter tube. The ends of these I just heated up with a heat gun and folded the corners in uh, so no water can get out that way. And they're plumbed in with 18 mil irrigation tubing into some 13 millimeter hoses with taps for flow adjustment. Now I've just removed the outtake plumbing and this is the first time I'm seeing this. Look at the roots in here. So that's the bok choy and pak choy. There's my parsley. That's the basil and the coriander. Okay, the, the roots actually look pretty good to me. I thought it would be clever to put square holes in the tops of my NFT rails, um, about 32 millimeters. So a 32 millimeter rock wool grow cube could fit nicely in there. Um, look, it's not a terrible idea, but it turned out to be really time consuming and painful to actually cut those square holes. I spaced the holes about six inches apart, which is fine for seedlings, but obviously as the plants start to get bigger, it starts to cause a few issues. I'm probably gonna harvest some of this bok choy, cut some of the outer leaves off. We'll be eating fresh bok choy tonight, and hopefully that opens up a little bit of space in the system. Um, but ultimately, I think I might cut every second one of these out. I might also raise the lights a bit to give everything a bit more space to grow up and that'll just be by replacing these lengths of 50 mil PVC pipe with longer ones. Now this is my offtake plumbing. So it is just a 100 mil PVC pipe um, end cap and an elbow with a reducer and a couple of elbows that uh, attached to the other plumbing that run down into the reservoir. I basically lined it all up and put it on an, uh, a downward slope 
and drew a line, cut the holes using a jigsaw and a Dremel and a heat gun to fold the flap up. And that all just sits on the end of the rails. It doesn't need anything holding it on there. Um, and the water flows out into there and obviously back, recirculates back through the res. So I'm just putting it back together now and I'm gonna carefully thread these hanging roots back up into my outtake plumbing. Right, done. I haven't actually used a lot of PVC glue in this project, but the parts that are glued are this end cap, otherwise it leaks. Uh, and this, this reducer in here, um, otherwise that leaks. I've also glued that join in that piece there, but I haven't glued the vertical join and that means I can still swing this piece. Now I'll go through the reservoir. It's a 140 litre plastic tub. It didn't come with a lid, so I've had to make a lid. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, I've got this elbow running down and I've ended up putting this piece down here to prevent too much splashing. Uh, now people might think splashing is good um, and it is because it aerates the water, but uh, I was finding it was splashing up onto the rim. My lid's not completely watertight and it was leaking out the sides. Um, what I do find is that the water does splash down here is still loaded with bubbles because of all the agitation that happens on the way down. And it does give me a nice air, aeration effect in my reservoir. Um, I have, uh, I think it might be a 750 pump, I'm not sure, running out my hose and into the system. So I've just turned the pump back on and we've got water flowing again and you can see the bubbles coming out into the reservoir. Um, I'm pretty sure that's aerating it nicely. So this is the reservoir lid. It's made from acoustic pin board. It comes in an 800 millimeter by 1200 millimeter sheet from Bunnings. Um, it's made from a woven polyester, I believe. Um, I don't know if it's food safe, don't really care. Um, it doesn't get into the water, doesn't get into the food. It doesn't seem to absorb water, so if you do spill a bit on it, it just kind of runs off. And what I've actually done to put this lip around the edge is I, I, I measured to size. Um, I had leftovers, I cut strips, and I just used hot glue to glue those on. Just holds it in place over the edges and makes sure no light gets in. Now let's talk about the grow lights. These are the ProGrow LED Model X, 60 watt, one bar, uh, true daylight spectrum. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be much at the red end there. I don't think these are gonna be in, any good for producing fruit. I wanna grow some chilies. I'm, pro I'm gonna get other lights. Um, I really only bought these because I was in a rush to get something so I could set this up over my Christmas break. Uh, this is just what the guy in the hydroponics shop recommended to me. Um, if I had my time again, I probably wouldn't get these lights, but they don't get too hot. I can touch them quite comfortably. They're dimmable. You can't daisy chain them, which is a bit annoying, but look, they seem like pretty good lights. They're doing a pretty good job in this system and I'm sure I'm always gonna be able to put them to good use even when I get some good lights more appropriate for flower and, and fruit. According to the box, these lights have a coverage of 45 centimetres by 70 centimetres. So I've just built my rack and spaced my rails in a way that I feel makes best use of that light coverage. So the frame is made from 50 millimetre PVC pressure pipe and all the associated fittings. Um, these cross pieces are 25 mil and none of it's glued. It's all just pressed firmly in and it doesn't seem to be causing me any issues. So the advantage of that is if I want to pull it apart and reconfigure it, I can always do that. For the feet, I've used end caps and I've put together a little adjustable bolt set up um, so I can screw those in or out to adjust the height of each leg and that way it was easy for me to get it all level um, and also to get my slope for my NFT rails. 
the NFT rails were cut from three meter lengths of that pipe. So each of those is a bit under um, a meter and a half long. So the frame length is I think about 1.2 meters. The width, given that we have a 70, a 70 centimeter light coverage width, um, the distance from the outside of that rail to the outside of that rail is about um, 60 centimetres and the distance from the front to back absolutely is about 80 centimetres. So if I had my time again, I probably wouldn't use PVC pipe as my shelving frame. I'd probably use a steel tube and I'd buy some steel tube connectors for shelving on the interweb somewhere. I just feel it's more space efficient and probably not that much more expensive. PVC pipe's not cheap, especially once you're buying all of these fittings and reducers. But at least it makes it easy to extend the system upwards, which I will be doing in the not too distant future. So that's the rundown. If you've stayed with me this long, you've done well. Thanks for watching.